at the moment, um, we're just about to do the 330 to and then and then that'll, that'll be pretty much until uh, they're not sure about the 730 or the 930 when they're going to go ahead and start. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as, as Okay, thank you. Um, I'll be doing the briefing today. The Premier uh, is currently uh, out with the State Disaster Coordinator inspecting uh, flood impacts in and around the Brisbane region. But I'd also just like to acknowledge uh, Peter uh, Bonzer from Deaf Services Queensland, uh, who's going to be assisting us in getting the message out to the hearing impaired community, of which obviously there is a significant number of people uh, in not just the Brisbane region, but in and around Queensland. So we hope that that will be of assistance to that community. Uh, there are only a few matters to, to update on today, but uh, just to report, in terms of the Brisbane River, it's currently recorded at 4.16 metres and rising, uh, and again is expected to reach a peak of around 5.5 metres, which uh, is in excess of the 1974 flood levels, around 4am tomorrow morning. One of the significant issues with this flood peak is that it's, it is expected to remain high uh, for 12 to 18 hours. Uh, so this will be a considerable impact uh, on uh, those communities right across Brisbane, uh, but particularly in the CBD where uh, the, the main uh, peak will be felt. Uh, at the Ipswich uh, River, uh, currently 19.4 metres and steady, 
uh, but is still expected uh, currently to rise to around 20.5 metres, uh, which is slightly higher than the 1974 levels. Again, I just want to um, uh, plea with people in terms of the triple zero network. Uh, we still have far too many people calling triple zero for unnecessary um, requests. Uh, it's really important uh, that our triple zero network is only used for life-threatening emergencies. Uh, we do have other alternatives uh, for uh, the SES 132500 or for the non-urgent police matters 131444. So I do ask people to please uh, free up the triple zero lines and only use those in genuine emergencies. I can provide an update on the uh, tragedy which is unfolding as a result of the Toowoomba and Lockyer Valley uh, flooding event. Uh, we confirm that there are 12 uh, people deceased at this point. Uh, we now have grave fears for nine people, so that has been revised down, uh, thankfully. Uh, but the total missing also has been revised down to 51. Uh, so, uh, thankfully, uh, people are, are being found uh, and identified as being OK, which, which is good news. But obviously we do have significant concerns still for a large number of people. Uh, a bit of an update in relation to the barge, uh, the island barge and the Mogul Ferry. <coughs> both of which are, are posing significant risks uh, to uh, the Brisbane uh, River um, environment. Uh, both, in both of those instances, um, uh, emergency services and police are still assessing the best way to manage uh, those particular events. Uh, however, that may involve destruction and sinking uh, of both of those, uh, those uh, pieces of infrastructure. Um, the only other uh, update uh, at this point, uh, the Centenary Highway uh, southbound is now closed. Uh, so right across Brisbane we will continue to see um, significant uh, road network um, uh, cuts. Uh, and again, we're just uh, uh, imploring people to uh, listen to their radios, be very careful if they are out on the roads, uh, because there may be some difficulty in travelling uh, throughout the, the city regions. Uh, in Chinchilla, uh, the community which is experiencing its second flood peak, uh, quite a significant and devastating impact again uh, on many people in those communities. Uh, unfortunately, uh, E. coli has been found in the water system, uh, so we're putting out uh, advice to the community to, to boil their water uh, prior to drinking. Uh, that's the, the current issues in terms of the update. I might ask the Police Commissioner, Bob Atkinson, to say a few words, and then we're happy to answer questions. Uh, Minister, thanks very much. Uh, look, uh, really, we're um, looking at issues here in Queensland across, across uh, five fronts at the moment. Uh, one is recovery in, in uh, cities like Rockhampton. Uh, secondly, of course, is the, um, the flood, uh, immediate disaster type response at places like Chinchilla, the Minister mentioned, and Gundawindi, where, for example, the levee bank is 11 metre height and the uh, prediction is around 10.7, so that'll be touch and go for Gundawindi. Um, third, of course, is the terrible tragedy in the Lockyer Valley, and as the Minister indicated, uh, that work's happening there today, and uh, thank goodness the rain stopped and waters have eased. And We have two aspects of that. One is the uh, search and recovery team to try and locate bodies of people who are missing, or, or in just, and I suppose, to, without question, to check damaged properties to see if there are deceased people there. It's a very difficult task because some of these houses have literally been demolished and we know that people were swept away as well, so they may not even be in the houses. Uh, there is some good news in that space, though. Uh, as the Minister mentioned, the number of people that we had grave fears uh, for the safety of is now reduced to nine, and two of those people have been found alive uh, under the most miraculous of circumstances. We've only just been advised of this, but uh, both of those people were literally swept away by floodwaters, and there was every reason to believe that they may have lost their lives. So we'll have more detail on that later in terms of the precise circumstances, but that's a small piece of wonderful news. Uh, the fourth issue of... Oh, I'm sorry, the other thing I'd just like to mention is that uh, there are two limbs to the, uh, the activity in the Lockyer Valley. One is the, the, endeavor, in the endeavours that are being undertaken, obviously, to find people, and sadly today two have been found deceased. Uh, and the other is the investigation, and that is going to be done by the Homicide Squad. 
uh, not because there is any suspicion of anything improper associated with any of these deaths, but because of the need to have um, those deaths um, investigated by skilled investigators uh, and so that the people in the region and the area locally can be freed up to do the work they need to do. So the Homicide Squad will investigate those deaths and six detectives from the Homicide Squad are on the ground uh, there at the present time to start those investigations. Uh, the fourth area, of course, is Ipswich and the fifth area is here in Brisbane. So I don't know that there's been a time in Queensland history where there's just been so much happening at the one time. Um, uh, apart from that, can I just uh, reinforce the general appeals for people if they're in doubt about their safety, if they're in a known low-lying area, uh, not to wait until the floodwaters are in your home. Uh, try to evacuate to a friend uh, or, or relative. If you can't do that, go to an evacuation centre. And, and I'd just like to conclude with a message of thanks. Uh, one of the uh, appeal requests that we had put out was for people not to um, be sightseers, and we understand the temptation to have a look at the Brisbane River, but we do appeal to people not to be sightseers, and we've asked that people stay off the roads unless that's absolutely necessary. And that last issue, our sense of that is that people are heeding that advice. Uh, in many areas of Brisbane there's a lot less traffic than there would be normally, and we are very grateful for that, and we ask people to continue to do that. Uh, that's all I had, uh, subject to any questions that you may have. Commissioner, how excited are you the fact that you found two people that were almost uh, yeah. forgotten? It's a wonderful news and, and I really one could only describe it as a miracle uh, based on uh, the circumstances under which they went missing, being swept away. And you've all seen, we all have the footage of those, uh, the torrential nature of those floodwaters. So for those two people to have survived is, is a wonderful story and hopefully we'll be able to share that with you in due course in, in greater detail when we find out ourselves. Were they together when you located them? Or? Uh, no, I think they were two separate incidents. Do you have a uh, I'm sorry, I wish I had the detail. I literally just got off the phone to the local assistant commissioner, assistant commissioner at Toowoomba and was told that uh, as we walked into this. So I don't have any more detail beyond his advice that these are two people who were on their list of those who had, we had grave fears for their safety on the basis that they'd been seen swept away and disappeared and, you know and now they've, uh, they've, they've, uh, they've survived. Do you know what Townsville was in uh, It's in that Lockyer Valley area, yes. Did he have a sense of elation when he rang you and sort of said, finally some good news? I think relief, uh, more than anything else, yes. Have you got any more detailed information about the, um, the boat and the Mogul Ferry at this point? I know you said you, the, there's a chance they'll be destroyed, but do you have any idea about the likelihood of that? Uh, the, that's uh, an option, um, and all the options are being considered at the moment. Uh, and maybe, and, and again, these things are unfolding as we speak, but uh, another uh, vessel that is um, of some concern as well is the floating restaurant uh, on Coronation Drive at Milton. A piece of that has broken away earlier today, a pontoon piece, and it was uh, swept down the river. So uh, whilst it's not at the same state of seriousness as the island and the Mogul Ferry, uh, it's of some concern as well. But um, these things, are, it's a very dynamic um, environment at the moment, and uh, obviously these things are are unfolding, uh, you know, not just hour by hour, but literally minute by minute. When you take into consideration those two who have been found, there's still nine outstanding that you hold very fears for, is that right? Yes. Yes, those, those numbers vary, of course, and they, I, I think everyone would accept that that's understandable. Uh, but the good news is that at one stage, the number of people who we had grave fears for the safety of had reached 18, and that's now down to nine. And uh, as the Minister mentioned, the number of missing people is now down to 51, and at one stage it had reached uh, 90, I think. So, so that's, that's, uh, that's good. And again, thank you for your coverage of, uh, all, of all of this. Uh, very grateful. Minister, at what point do you make a decision about those barges? Um, it, does light come into this and, and try and remove them before it gets dark, etc., and you can reach that peak later on in the morning? Well, that, that again is an operational decision for the officers on the ground, the district officer, uh, who is empowered to make those decisions. So really, uh, they will assess the best option in terms of public safety. Uh, and if that, that needs to be done today, it will. But at this stage, I can't give that answer directly. It's really a matter for uh, the, the officers on the ground making that operational decision. All right. No. Okay, thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you.